Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Approaching Bros Podcast. We are our host Jeff and Kyle, our first ever double host intro. But we had an awesome conversation today. We had a great episode with our friends Kevin and Juan from FTR Fitness, Find That Rep Fitness. Um, unbelievable story both of these guys have. They are uh, first generation Americans. Uh, their family moved here from Mexico when they were young. They had to start off with very, very little. They went from working at an Orange Theory to uh, work, you know, working at a warehouse and an Orange Theory and then opening their own gym and their journey had a lot of setbacks, a lot of tribulation along the way. And they overcame a lot to get to where they are today. Day. So much to learn, so much to grasp from this episode. We had some really great talks. Uh, if you guys are somewhere in your fitness journey and you ever find yourself doubting yourself, this is the best episode I probably ever had as far as you listening into. Make sure you let us know what you guys think in the comments as always and appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. And uh, without further ado, let's get you right into the episode. Juan, you mentioned you had a you know significant weight loss. That right. really like changed your outlook as far as your relationship with fitness. Kevin, how'd you find fitness? Yeah. So for me, um, after high school, I felt really um, out of shape. Uh, didn't really have any, a lot of muscle. Uh, not did very you, did confident. Did you play sports or anything in high school? Uh, so I played basketball. Mm-hmm. I played basketball growing up, um, you know, ever since I could, you know, walk, did that stuff. Uh, I dislocated my knee. My sophomore year, like si- like kneecap on the side of your leg. Yeah. Type? So uh, uh, the story, yikes. quick story on that is, uh, I was playing for a traveling team, AU, and um, you know, I went up for a dunk, and then when I landed, so casual, went up for a dunk. Yeah, How tall are you? Know, uh, you know, just five nine. No big yeah, deal. yeah, went up for a dunk my sophomore <laughs> year of high school. No big deal. Five nine. Jeff, you can't dunk. I can't even touch the rim. I always dude. thought you could dunk. I don't know. Awfully nice of you. Anyway, sorry. So casually going up for a dunk, and then uh, you know, unfortunately, when I landed, uh, I landed funny and it just quick pop pop you know left right i blacked out and then you know ironically there was a doctor there and he's like oh it's your mcl and then all i remember is my dad backing up the old corolla and putting me in the back seat like all right well let's go home and figure that out uh not to the hospital nope let's go home just let's go home mexican culture is a little different i'm with you (laughs) he's like we got ice at home (laughs) yeah there we go that's that's pretty much it yeah um but anyhow you know i played, played basketball growing up i did some track i just got tired of you know feeling not confident not strong and uh, I just dove into it. I actually have some pictures on my phone. You know, I could show mm-hmm. you because, uh, you know, it started in 2017 and uh, around 2018. I feel like for I our made, listeners, we'll send these to Luke and Luke. Oh, it's like, you post can, these up are here. they on your Instagram? Yeah, they are on my Instagram. Here, Luke, you kind of scroll down. Um, yeah, Luke's just going to pop it up for you right here on the screen. Oh, look at the one. There this transformation is pretty, it's pretty insane. So, yeah, that's me. Uh, you know, October 9th, 2017. Uh, as you can tell, just. Not very uh, toned, not very in shape. Just kind of let myself go here. And if you swipe to the right, this will be exactly one year. So pretty cool. Um, The confidence was through the roof. Um, I just felt really good, really strong. Um, Again, less pain, which probably was like the coolest thing. I couldn't believe the results that I got, and it was just... And was this Orange Theory that you were doing? Uh, so that right there was just kind of like my own thing. And then my brother was kind of guiding me as well. Um, and also kind of was going to physical therapy for my stuff. And a combination of those things and just being consistent. Um, I was how, very... Go ahead, so how much solid weight did that, was that on the gain? On the gain, I would say about a solid like 10, 11 pounds of muscle. That's wild, And then dude. keeping it. Yeah, it was, it was, like I said, it was surreal. Um it really gave me the confidence, and then um, I feel like it gives me a special power um, on helping, you know, kids, teenagers that are really linky and tall, you know, and like, man, if I could just tell them about what I've been through and the pain I've been through and just kind of tell them that and then um, make their own decision based off my experience. I'm not saying do what I do, but, like, just mm-hmm. take take it with a grain of salt and just kind of, you know, soak it in and. Yeah, man, it seems like you're intense, you know, obviously in the right spot and, mm-hmm. and you're guiding them in a way that, you know, is like a, from personal experience. And the only question I have for you on that is just like, at what point in your journey did you feel that confidence like really start to to take off for you where you felt like you could turn around and teach others how to get there? Um, was there a point uh, you remember? I would say it was gradually. I wouldn't say there was a point like when it happened. Um, I would say... Um, Around like 2000, 2020, uh, I met a, met a friend of mine. His name is Mike Wigner. Uh, you know, he uh, 
was a mentor of mine. Did you Mike say Wagner? Mike Wagner? Yeah, Mike Wagner. Yeah, no dude. kid. Yeah, Big yeah. body. Biggest dude ever. So, Big body. Yeah, so yeah. you guys know you guys oh, know yeah, we, we know love, Mike. We love Mike, man. Okay. He's a great guy. So he was yeah. my mentor for, you know, a few years and uh um he was really good at just uh, you know, what I just told you, like sharing his experience and kinda, you know, showing me what to seek out for and what to prosper and stuff like that. So um yeah, definitely sh- big shout out to Mike if you're hearing this yeah. man. You're, yeah, man, he's you're he's a big awesome. part of my uh, of my journey, like mentally. Like he just, I feel like I'm a lot. Like I'm able to help a lot of people because of what he's done for me. So. Yeah, dude, that's so that's so powerful. And, mm-hmm. and and for all of our listeners, Mike is a a guy that can walk around at 300 pounds <laughs> uh, of, of of just full on jacked. Yeah. And uh, for a guy like that to put his arm around you, if you will, and and help guide you along the way. If that guy can be humble enough to talk to you, why couldn't we, right? Yeah, for do the same thing for others. For sure. And I want to add a little bit. So, like, Mike, uh, you know, he helped me. And then uh, I just kind of, you know, we, you know, life happened. And we kind of went a little bit. And I don't talk, uh, don't hang out as much, but we still talk. Um, but. Um, you see he's managing the Olathe Foundation? Yes. Yes. I have, I have seen that. Mm-hmm. Have he's seen the that. GM over at the Amendment. Really? Yeah, man, so it's not too far. But sorry, go ahead with your story about you and Mike. You said good to continue that. Yeah, yeah, So, like, I feel like Mike just set a really good foundation. And then with Juan, of, you know, he's also been kind of mentoring me as well with, you know, his experience and our life experience growing up together. Um, we just, you know, we learned a lot through the things we went through as brothers. And, uh, you know, just very grateful for that. And, uh, you know, it was shitty sometimes and it was good sometimes. But, you know, just got to be grateful for it all. And I feel like, uh, you know, I wouldn't take this journey with anyone else, man. I love my brother. Love you, dog. That's awesome, <laughs> dude. But, yeah, no, just, uh, you know. Just, so, yeah, I mean, dude, mm-hmm. talk about So you went through this big transformation. Mm-hmm. It, it was one of those things where, you know, if it feels like you built a lot of confidence through that. When did you guys get enough confidence that you're like, you know what, let's open our own gym? Because I mean, that's a big, big step. That's uh, that's putting your nuts on the line and and really, you know, just saying, hey, we're gonna we're gonna do this. And you know, you kind of have you kind of have to have a burn the burn the boats mentality, you right. know, if you're gonna be successful in business. When did that happen for you guys? So I got out. I left Orange Theory, and then I created my own personal training, had my little following. And then can I ask I, what you were training out of there one? Yeah. So I actually worked out a unique deal with my apartment complex. Okay. And no one used the gym. Right. So pretty common. Right. So I would start off with just my one-on-one clients and then I was trying to see how I could, you know, my time make it, you know, better. So I was like, Hey, you, you two or three people mind coming at one time. I got ADD. So the more things that I have going on, the better it is for me. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how the FTR group training with a personal feel happened was I ended up having, you know, people would walk in and walk out, kind of meet each other. And then next to me, like, Hey, could I come and work out with so-and-so and the seven thirty? And next thing you know, I'd have like five people and we had three treads, a squat rack and some dumbbells. So I would have like a station here, a station there. And that's kind of how that cre- that started. Um, from there, I, I knew my brother would have my back and I knew he was great. And I was like, Hey, you know, it's going to take some sacrifice. Uh, it's not going to be pretty for a little bit, but, um, our big why is our parents, uh, blue collar family migrated over from Mexico. Um, you know, we live paycheck to paycheck and, uh, that's not the way we want to live. Uh, the Mexican culture, we go off of, you know, overtime, like we would, my uncles, my cousins, you know, I worked X amount of overtime and to me that was okay. But I was like, I want to think long-term. I want to be able to take uh, a vacation, go to Turks, take the family on a random Tuesday if I want to. Um, it's And it comes from, we never got to experience that. You know, we would go to Mexico maybe once every five years because that's all our parents could afford. And that was our, our vacation. And I guess I would see friends live this life. And I was like, I want that for our family. I want that for for our kids and I want to build a foundation and I want to make uh, the Pachardo name, you know, worthwhile, you know, and that's kind of, that's kind of how it started. So we made the jump. We, we got the lease. Uh, we bootstrapped it. We, uh, what is it? What? Bootstrap. 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 And uh, we, we didn't take no more investors besides 
our, my grandma, our grandma passed away and she left a little money in the bank and, uh, our, our mom just left it in the bank. And I'm like, Hey mom, you know, this is a big ask, but I know it's going to work. And, uh, you know, if you give me, you know, X amount, it was $50,000. I was like, if you give me the 50,000, I'll give you 20% of the gym. And I was like, you get residual income. Once we hit, you know, I broke the numbers down and I was like, instead of the money just sitting in the bank, you know, depreciating, cause that's what money does in the bank. Mm -hmm. I was like, why don't we put it into something that then you could make X amount on top of that. Right. And, uh, that's kind of not to mention helping her sons a whole lot in the meantime, 100%. Right. And, and I had other <laughs> investors that wanted, sure, but they wanted more. They want, and I, and I couldn't do it. I no. couldn't give up 40%. I just couldn't. Oh, it makes no sense, bro. I, yeah, no, couldn't like, do it. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, you could, it just wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of how, how yeah. it all started. How, if you're working, doing 40%, that's like just you working at a, you know, back at the uh, apartment complex yep. again. Yeah. How, right. how, how did you guys land on uh, find that rep? What does that mean to you guys? So, and that, that can, that's going to dive into, I mean, it, that's a whole other story, but, uh, so find that rep. There was a time where I was a big basketball player and I was really, really good. And I could have been something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I tore my ACL, lost my girlfriend. And I, I guess I didn't have the proper guidance to be like, Hey, life knocks you down. You get back up. So I kind of threw in the towel. I gained a bunch of weight. Uh, I would work at the warehouse and, uh, I was just insecure. And, and, and then, uh, I started an entertainment company with my friends and that led me into, uh, drugs and alcohol. And, uh, I was taking drugs more than I needed to. And I'm an all in or all out guy. And I got tired of taking a drug and I had withdrawals, landed in the hospital, almost died. And then, uh, had to move back into my parents. I was suicidal, uh, had thoughts just, I knew I had a big reason in this life and I wasn't fulfilling it. And I was like, I was like, okay, you're going to either become this person that you're proud of and that you're, that, you know, you can help lots of people overcome things. You've already lost the weight. Now, can you help someone want to live again? And, uh, so I would literally get up and be like, find it. Just get up just to get up. Cause I would go work, come back home and then watch TV, let time go. Uh, and that's just how it happened for, for about three to six months. And I wanted to figure that out. So after the, after the hospital, I got a therapist, I went to a meetings and, uh, the AA, there were, there was people in there 10, 15 years. And they were like, yeah, hi, I'm X and, uh, I'm a drug addict and I'm a big believer of what you say, what yeah, you say you are. The, the whole identity so, behind that. So yeah. That, that, that whole thing is bullshit to me because, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm Juan, I'm Juan Pichardo and I'm not a drug addict. I just had an experience, a moment in time where I abused a drug and that's not who I am anymore. And I walked out and never went back. Bro, that's um, so awesome, man. So, yeah. So that's kind of, that's, that's a whole other story. But finding it is, I had to find it with myself to want to live. And uh, that led into working out and, and the pain of not wanting or not feeling worthy of living is nothing to a little hard set. It's nothing to a little race. I'm out of breath. Uh, so I was able to take that pain and, and go through that. And over time, I built confidence. And, you know, I lost weight again and uh, got confidence. And I've kind of figured out a, a way to help people, um, whether reach their goal or be motivated or be inspired or, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, any, everyone's great. Everyone has a light. Not everyone shines that light. And it takes sacrifice and discipline and hard times and uh, getting back up and getting knocked down to get that to, to shine. And I want, I, I just, that's kind of one of my things is like, Hey, like, let's make this world a better place. Uh, suicidal's very big right now. I'm big on mental health. FTR is big on mental health. That's why it's uh, it's more than a gym. It's a way of life. It's a way of thinking kind of how you guys, you guys are with your brand. You guys do things a, a certain way and it's not just one of you, it's all of you. Mm -hmm. And it, you guys have been successful and, have created a great team, a great family and helped thousands and thousands of people. And hopefully that's millions soon enough. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm so happy for you said so many things that we could segue off of, but I want to go back to, you know, uh, the really strong, powerful statement. I feel like the most powerful thing I heard you say was, um, you know, what's being short of breath or, you know, fighting through a set if you're not feeling like you're worthy of living. Right. You know, like that's like nothing in comparison. Right. right? 
And, um, you know, for some people that's just like, you know, maybe they're not as, as low as your low points been, but it's so beautiful that you can say like, man, I can promise. I know where you're if If you're feeling the lowest of the low, I've been there. Right. Yeah. And I, and I, and I climbed out of it. So whatever hole you're in, I know you can climb out of it. Right. right. Um, can you give us an example of, you know, how that testimony that you had has helped somebody within the FTR community so far? Yeah. Uh, I think one of the greatest compliments I can get is, you know, I helped, uh, client of mine lose about 50 pounds gets a little emotional but uh he was like you saved my life and uh that just made it all worth it right there for me you know and, it, and it's been on countless occasions and now as I have this platform and I meet more people it happens more and more and and it, it saddens me that I see all these people struggling with life and uh people aren't given the proper tools and uh social media is fucking people up and people are little putting their highlights, making others feel less than. And, uh, I'm here to kind of like, Hey, it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. You're great. Let's be great. Yeah, man. I, I I mean, that's, there's so much you can unpack there, but what comes to mind for me is like, how do these people find the courage to, to do something about it? Cause that's the hardest part, right? It's just that first step of saying, I'd like to not feel this way. I'm going to do something to try to stop it. Right. It, it's hard. Uh, I would say try to reach out to someone that inspires you, someone that, that loves you, that, that understands you, uh, or even get help, professional help from a therapist. Um, but yeah, looking for that guidance. And it, yeah, the, you know, what you guys are saying as far as like the fitness is, I, I believe it's more effective, uh, you know, if you look at it versus antidepressants. And I think there's a lot of reasons that that is true. And it's, I think fitness done the right way. You're providing culture for somebody You're providing, you know, a support group that a lot of people that don't have that are, that are depressed or, or in a bad mental space. You're also giving them something to look forward to. Um, so if somebody has a goal that they're, they're after, you know, they're trying to be stronger, they're trying to lose weight, they're trying to, you know, improve, you know, a mile time. Those are things that they, they have to look forward to. And plus, you know, like we were talking earlier, it's like when you work out, you're releasing endorphins, you're releasing dopamine. Um, you just feel better. It's, it's like, you know, that's one of the big things for me is like, if I'm stuck in a rut, first thing I do is go outside and I walk, you know, just go outside and get some fresh air and walk around, get your heart rate up just a little bit and you feel better. You know what I'm saying? And I can't, I mean, that can't be overstated. It's, you know, when I hear about the, when I hear about what's, what's going on with mental health in the younger generation right now, the first thing that it comes to my mind is like, how many of these kids are being forced into being active? You know what I'm saying? Instead, they're sitting in their room with, you know, like you said, with a phone in their hand. um, And their only, you know, connection with people is through a device that's not really making you feel connected with somebody. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like. Even worse. I mean, it actually falsely makes you feel like you're connecting with somebody. Well, it makes you compare. You're you're playing the comparison game. Um, It's draining your dopamine. And so it's like. You know, the, it, it's crazy to me that from like uh, the top down, our nation, you know, the government's not pushing out like, hey, we need to return to be, you know, think about obesity rate. The obesity rate's bad. You know, mental health is, is only getting worse and worse. Obviously, drug, the drug epidemic, you know, fentanyl is killing people at a much higher rate. It's like from the top down, it's crazy that there is not more of a push into like we have to become a healthier nation, you know, because it's you know, it'll help with depression. It'll help with, um, you know, obesity rates. It's going to, it's going to be, you know, what would be best for our country. And, and you don't hear about it. You know what I'm saying? You don't hear about it from the government. It takes people like us sitting in this room to basically find our, our, you know, people and try and do what we can in those little pockets, but it needs to be more, you know, there needs to be more of that out there because, you know, for that guy that, you know, was trying to lose 50 pounds and you saved his life. Has lost 50 pounds. Has lost. We keep it off. We keep it off. Has lost 50 pounds. You know, dude, there's freaking thousands and thousands and thousands oh. of those people in Kansas City alone that don't know where to turn to. Right. And they're they're hopeless. They're feeling hopeless. And, that, and that's why that's a big reason why FTR was created. This yeah. is a place where you will be held accountable. Okay. You have you want you you have to want to change. Mm-hmm. Okay. You have we have to change some of your ways, some of your habits. And 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 we even do an assessment and we do a calendar and we ask these four questions. 
And if and you guys can take these force questions, will take you a long way in, in multiple ways. Whether it's, you know, what, whatever you're trying to accomplish, it's what do you want, why do you want it, why don't you have it, and then what are you willing to do to get it. And those are the four questions I ask everybody. So if you come in, I'm like, what, well, what do you want? And I'm like, okay, well, why don't you have it? Okay, cool. Then what are you willing to do to get it? And then they basically tell you everything that needs to be done from there. I just hold you accountable. And I, like I tell people, I'm like, I'm your GPS. You want to go to New York to Cali? I've been there. I got the GPS here, but I need you to drive it. Mm-hmm. I need you to pump the gas. I can't pump the gas for you, but I will GPS you the whole way. And I tell people, if you don't, I can take you to the lake if you don't want to drink it. That's, that's, that's all, that's all, that's all I can do. Bro, the, the accountability is everything though. 100%. Because people, people leave your gym and they go home to a family that's like, why are you eating like that? Right. And why, well, why don't you want to do wine night anymore? Right. Why, why, you know. We're going out for so-and-so's birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you have to, that's a big thing is like people restructuring their support group and also being able to look at people honestly, even if they're the closest people to them and being like, do I want the, you know, do I want to look like that? You know, do I want to feel the way that that person feels? Even if they're somebody that's really close to them, like a spouse. Right. Cause those are the people that influence, you know, people the most and they can be the most detrimental to a person's long-term right. success. Right. So yeah, it's, that's, that's big, man. I want to talk now about like, so this is cool. You, you guys have clearly like a very defined purpose. You have a very defined why. And, uh, the business is nothing more than just like, you know, some colors and letters and branding that is just attached to the mission. Right. 100%. And so what was the process of like, you know, you know, we know like how passionate it is to help change somebody's life. You know what I mean? But the part of like the building of the business, what unique thing happened in the process of like, you know, turning it into a full fledged Googleable business where you have a location and a number and all the address, like, was that part fun or did it just suck? You know what I mean? It, it, it wasn't, it sucked, but then we have our ghost, which is Earl and shout out Earl, shout out the man. He doesn't even, he's over there. Just yeah. <laughs> who know who, but, uh, yeah. great guy, uh, very visionary. Uh, one of the best, if not, I think he's the best, in the game and creating the clothes uh, all the way from the stitching to, you know, what kind of clothes it is. He, he's in charge of all that. He He's in charge of, I told him, this is what I want the gym to look like. These are the favorite colors. And he was just able, we're almost like one. It's almost like he's my soulmate. Like if you find the one, you know, your wife, I'm not married yet. Uh, he's kind of like, like, like the soulmate. Like he understands me. I understand him. We all understand each other. And, um, he kind of made that into a reality. So it would have sucked if I didn't have Earl, but uh, I'm very grateful for Earl. And how, he, how did you and Earl uh, ever meet? A uh, lifetime. Okay. We worked out a lifetime. I was like, hey, do you mind if I jump in here real quick? And then the vibe, you know how you guys, I'm very, I'm off of vibes. Uh, I, and he was just like, yeah, sure. And then we started talking and then he's like, hey, how about we work out next week? And then uh, he had his own clothing line at the time. And I thought that was super cool. And I was just printing shit on a shirt. And I was like, fuck, like this dude's, you know, designing Legit. the strings on the, on the hat, like the, the everything. And I'm like, fuck, like I want to do that. And then he kind of yeah. got to know me and my experiences. That was actually a lifetime. That's the shirt I was printing. Uh, when was that? 175 weeks ago? Yeah. Four weeks, almost four weeks ago, three and a half. So four years. Earl's Jack dog. Oh yeah. Yeah. Earl's, oh. Earl's Jack for sure. But, uh, so we met and. We, we kicked it off and we trusted each other and we built a bond and, and that's kind of how everything happened, you know? So uh, dude, uh, you guys have, uh, like I said, this unbelievable passion, purpose, personal experiences. I mean, all of this goes into it. And so it's not a matter of if you guys, you know, will be successful, right? It's just a matter of, you know, when and how long, because you guys have already lived this, you know what I mean? Like you have nothing you have to prove to anybody. Cause you've already proved it to yourselves. And that's the best part and for sure. And it's also the best part as far as being a part of it, as far as being a part of your community, because you created this out of necessity, not because you were just trying to make a buck. Right. And that's the coolest part about it is like, you guys have no idea. It's like, you know, there's no life, you know, there's no heartbeat behind most of these brands. Um, but you guys created your own, right? you know? And so, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to have met you guys today and it's been really fun to get to know the wise behind everything. And so I'm just anxious to hear about like, what does it go? Where does it go from here? Because 
you know, it wasn't all about the the business and the making the money to get it started. It was feeling like out of necessity, but it's like with the success of FTR to this point, you got to start thinking about, well, now how do I, how do I make two of these? Right. right. What's so, that look like? So what it looks like is luckily I have mentors in my life that have been very successful and, uh, they went through their hardships and you kind of, as you meet successful people, you kind of see the same equation, right? They got knocked down. They pushed through, they had faith, they buckled down, they doubled down on their disciplines and uh, became successful. And I had one mentor, uh, he actually sold his company for 40 million at age 40. And, uh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty inspiring. And I saw the way he was living. I thought it was great. But, uh, back to what you were saying is he was like, look, create the first one, make the jump. I'm not going to help you. No money. He had the money, but he's like, I can't. I was like, I need you to have the, re- the, the sleepless nights. The, how are you going to pay rent? How are you going to pay payroll? You have to go through that. I can't baby you through that. But you get the first one done. I'll have a check for you. No interest, no nothing for the next three. You just pay me back when you can. So it's nice that I don't have to bootstrap this one. And that the financials done, but uh, now it just goes from location, right? Do we want to go? I'm thinking either Parkville, at least Summit. I'm even thinking uh, more South OP, um, and uh, gonna start kind of Midwest and then kind of go on the way on sure. the way out. I want to go back to my roots of California. Mm-hmm. Um, real estate's a little expensive over there, so that's kind of more when we grow. But I want to go globally. I Taxes, wanna, bro. Yeah. Taxes. So we'll, we'll see about California. That's a last minute thing, but we want to go global. Um, we want to help change the world, make this a better place and build a platform where people can come in, want change, have different goals and still get trained um, to meet their individual goals and not be judged. Most importantly, not be judged, be accepted and you will be held accountable. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that's what we want. And that's what's next is growing. Um, well, first is learning how to get more, members growing this to a five to 600 members before going on to the next one, because it's what's the point of starting my next one next year. And I still haven't figured out exactly how to, you know, you got to make it profitable, dude. You got to make yeah. it profitable first and you got to like, and like, you know, build out your systems, obviously. Right. Yeah. Cause it's, the thing is, is like right now I would just tell you like from just meeting you guys, like Juan, your passion comes through so much. So in the way that you speak and obviously how you feel about things that like you're a massive part of your brand. You personally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just from the way that you talk, you know, that's, that's how you train people out of an apartment complex gym is be the person that you are on that as far as just the way that you speak. Um, and so like you can sell people within 30, 60 seconds. Right. Yeah. And so when you guys go to two and three and four, um, how does your passion carry through in the experience when you're not there? And that's going to be one of the struggles, right? And and have I been it could asked- be a struggle or it could be obviously like a very, very uh, important challenge right. when you meet, like when you get right. it, it could be the thing that carries you guys through. Right. It's just a matter of uh, it's, um, it's, it's a problem that needs to be solved, I guess, right? right? And we've, we've thought about it and <clears throat> I've really, really thought about it. And one of the things that's motivating or inspiring is how you guys do it. You guys did it. You got everybody in your company. I've never met one person that I'm like, they don't fit. They shouldn't be working there. Core All solid people. Core values, dude. And Cause, Cause that was the big thing for us. Like our brand, you know, in its infancy, it was Andy Frisella. Like it was him posting on Facebook and getting, you know, helping to drive traffic to us. And then he was like, well, you know, in 2011 we had a, uh, we had a banquet and uh, when we came to the banquet, there was a card laying on each each person's plate, and it was the core values. It was the first time that we that didn't know were, they were doing it. We didn't know it was coming out. They didn't ask us how many but, values should we have, and and how you know what's the value? What should they be? But just in, in that in that moment, he said he knew exactly what Jeff was saying. Which we can't if we're going to grow, it can't be on the back of just my personal brand. Yeah. And so he was like, "This is the way that we're going to basically." everyone's going to align, you know, with the same ideas and the same work ethic and the same values. And so we went over those core values and said, this is, this is who our company is from this time forward. And our staff is going to be hired and fired based on these. And so we got to protect that, you know, um, radically, right? right? Like just absolutely not. When it comes to people don't align with those values, it's like, Hey man, sorry. Like it's not personal. You see the values on the wall. You got to live it or not. Yeah. And that's kind of what I tell my brothers. Like, we got to make sure that we're constantly getting better, constantly learning. The more we learn, the more we can help. Mm-hmm. And we don't have it figured out and it's okay. Dude, that what I want to go back to, you know, what your mentor said too. 
Um, yeah, man, what a, what a gift they what gave you with that. Yeah. I, it's crazy because, you know, we, we talk about not a perceived gift, but you know, it's a real gift with, with our, with our employees. There's lots of times that we, we get into the position where like, man, should we bail them out of this bad situation? Right. Yeah. They just need like 500 bucks in their life. If you, be so much easier. If, right? if you do Something that like to somebody and we've done that and I watched Andy before we ever became business owners, I watched Andy do that. And what you're doing is you're robbing somebody of the opportunity to learn, you know, that grit that you develop in going through stuff like that. You can't take that away from people. You take that away from people, you pacify them, you make them not, not able to build the calluses on their hands that it takes to be right. successful. And that's yeah. happening a lot, Amen. especially, uh, I'm in the Johnson County area. People mm-hmm. make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Parents are busy. Guess how they love giving things. Mm-hmm. Can't do that. You got to teach them to fish, mm-hmm. right? Teach them to fish. You yeah. don't teach them to fish. They can't. They can't recognize that it, 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 there's there's no bailout. You know what I mean? It's just you know either you can or you can't. You know what I mean? As far as like the finish line goes, and unfortunately, like we're. I mean, I had a conversation this morning with somebody who was, you know, in a relationship where they just their their significant other had never faced any kind of adversity before, and he was like, "Man, like I don't know if I can do this with this person because." She just never faced any adversity because she's always been bailed out her right. whole life. It's like, you know, something happens, call daddy. And you're like, Ooh, and, that, and if you've been through it, which you guys have, yeah, it's kind of like, mm, like I need someone that's been through it because then we have an understanding mm-hmm. and you're on this, you're over here. And I, I, I was raised this way. And you know, if they have kids or whatever, how's that going to work? Yeah. When life happens, just how do you handle the situations? And here's, what's cool. I mean, like, Juan, you already mentioned this. It's like the biggest roadblock you'd ever hit was that ACL tear. And you did let it beat you, right? You had oh, 100%. victim mentality. You, you let it control you. You, you decided I'm no longer going to like, you know, pour into myself. I'm going to treat myself like shit. And then you treat others like shit. Right. And you judge others oh. and then you bring others down and, and why, and then any, like, why, anything but facing your own and realities. I'm like, why do people do that? And now it all makes sense. Mm-hmm. So when I meet a dick, <laughs> I'm like, damn, bro, I feel bad for you. Yeah, yeah man. because like you can say whatever you want about me. I don't, I don't care. I my, think my intentions are pure. I'm going to get up. I'm going to work. I'm going to help someone. So whatever you say is really irrelevant, but I can, I kind of see like, you know, an insecure man or, and, and it's a lot, and especially how people post and I don't, I don't ever really judge anyone. I'm no one to judge, mm-hmm. but, um, when those people are belittling others, if you know how many people have belittled someone and they took their life, that's fucked up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm here to stand up for those people. So if you, you know, I'm not some big tough guy, but I will stand strong for, for those people that need it. And, uh, I'm lucky enough to be strong, to uh, prevail and push through. But there's a lot of people that aren't, that aren't, you know, there's a lot of people that can't and they don't. And, and that's not fair because we only get one of these, you know? And, uh, you know, I get emotional about it because I care. And and I don't care that, you know, tears, it's just genuine, man. I really do care about yeah. people. Bro, it's uh, it's just one of those things where, you know, you know what it's like to, you know, edit anything I'm saying here. No, as far go as ahead. It, I want the, the world. The, one of my mentors said, one, if you don't tell your story, how many lives are you not saving? So I took that to heart and I just let it out. I don't, I, I, there's nothing to hide. You got it. You got it. It's important, you know, in my opinion, in business is to, when you're telling your story, when you're, when you're, you're pouring into your customers, when you're pouring into your staff, your emotions have to be on your sleeve. When it comes to deal with like business, you know, you have to be almost cold and unemotional, right? Yeah. So that's where the grit thing comes in. The more that you deal with like hard situations from like a business standpoint, the more unemotional you get about it, you know, oh, you have this bad thing happen. No big deal. I've dealt with something like that before, but you can't lose who you are. You know what I'm saying? You can't lose that, that edge of, of being emotional when it comes to, you know, seeing somebody, um, you know, lose that 50 pounds or seeing somebody come into the, to, to you guys' gym that needs the extra help. You got to be able to basically transfer that emotion to that person and get that person excited. Yeah. 100%. And, and, and same thing with your staff, because really your staff is just going to be, you know, extension an extension of, of you. Base. 100% yeah. member base. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, some deep stuff. Yeah. It's real. Uh, it's real. I mean, bro, that's, um, most people's journey with fitness comes from, you know, the battles they were fighting internally. You know? 100%. And unfortunately, like fitness can also be used, obviously, like as a way to, uh, you know, dissociate or, um, you know, numb out, if you will, from your emotions. Like, you know, like 
um, you know, we, we talked about this earlier and Kyle is going to actually ask you this question personally. Cause it's like, Hey, let's say somebody's feeling depressed. Um, and they want to use fitness as a, as a way to make themselves feel better. And it's like, dude, who, who has not gotten, who's, who's ever gotten done with a workout and been like, man, you know, I regretted that workout. Right. right? I, never. Right. Find that never. rep or live with they regret. Did, that's they, our, yeah, yeah, that's our slogan. It, I love that. Find, find that rep or, or live, live with regret. regret. How many it's, reps have you, did you not give your all and you're like, fuck mm-hmm. in a workout? And so the question I it's pose the for next you guys, day that they do that. What? It's the next day. What's it's when they get up the next morning and they're like, ah, that was pretty tough. I don't want to go do that again. I don't. It's disagree. never right after the workout. So, well, <laughs> that that's true. That yeah. is true. Uh, the, the question I don't know the answer to is the, is the one I want to ask. Is like, we don't. We've all found um, a lot of fulfillment from fitness, uh, helping others, so on and so forth. What I feel like um, the personal development game does not do a great job of, especially if you're somebody who is um, an extremist, you know, is you get through, you know, you start doing the workouts. So many people become obsessive with their workouts, et cetera. No one teaches them how to feel if they miss one. Right. Right. If I didn't make it to the gym that day. Right. Right. If I didn't eat perfect on my diet that day, how should I feel about myself then? And so if they never learned how to give themselves grace, if they ever never learned how to not feel so much shame over, you know, not doing something perfect that day just because life happened. Right. It can unravel real fast. Yeah. But now right. that's all something we've all been through though. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and we've pivoted like when I was fat and overweight and insecure and I got friend zoned all the damn time. <laughs> I was like, shit, like, yeah. you know, it's, it started with, I want to get girls. I want to look good. You that's know, Jeff. I want this girls, Jeff. I, I want, that, that's I want like, girls <laughs> to want me. You know, my six, brother was grade. always, yeah. my brother always was looking good, you know? Yeah. And, and I was always the chunky one. And I was like, fuck, like I want that. So it started with, I, that was my, one of my drives mm-hmm. and it somewhere life hit me and I finally got there and, and, and then it went to a depression and then it, that was all other pivot. And then I used fitness for a different reason. And, 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 and I feel like everybody starts working out for a reason, but somewhere in there you transition and you use fitness in different ways for whatever you're going through, you know? So first it was like, yeah, I want women. Now it's like, I want to save lives. Totally. That's way, I look back at myself like, Ooh, but it's like, I can't be You couldn't mad. have the one without the other. And mm-hmm. it's like, everything I've went through is why I am now. And I have to give myself grace. But that's just why the community is so important of what you guys do. And so if you're listening to this and you're somebody who has not ever taken the jump to, to, to truly consider yourself in quotes, a fitness person, right. Where they've never really taken the time to go to the gym and, and make, be consistent with it. It's why community is so important when you're getting into fitness because you need to have people to talk to on those days you miss it. Or you go on that vacation and you took four or five days off. And then once you got back, that motivation to get there, you know, oh, maybe I'll take another week off. Right. I think, yeah. And a week comes a month and so on and so forth. And so you need that community to help bring you back in and say, hey, man, it's not about how many days in a row you make it, et cetera. It's just that we want you here because we want you to pour into yourself. Right. I think, you know, that question too is like you. Most people that are going to go through that are still in the um, the phase of like feeling like they're a fraud in the fitness space. Mm-hmm. You know, like people like for me, imposter if I miss syndrome, if you Im- will. imposter syndrome, if I miss a day of working out, it's like I don't even think you know. Like I like working out because of what it does here. Right. Like I need to have it because I feel like it helps me. It helps my mental clarity. It makes me feel better throughout the day. But, you know, if I don't work out on a day, you know, I don't work out most weekends. No big deal. You 100%. know what I'm saying? Because it's part of my identity now. Right. But right. like the people that are still in the phase of like, is this me? You know, I, I got to make it, you know, I got to make it to every. You but mentioned they, like they're not worthy of it though, Kyle. They don't think they're worthy of being right. a fitness person. There's a difference, man. And, and yeah, you, that, insecure, I, I, insecure ass people, which that's just many that's, people that's right. time and, are not thinking like you're thinking because they, they don't think of themselves as a fitness person because they're not good enough. That's right. just time in the saddle of fitness, really. Because it's like, you can't, if you've been doing something for, five years, you can't no longer think of yourself as a fitness person. You, you say that, dude, but I feel like that is your belief. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not trying to be that say guy. That again. Say, say that again. Cause I, I think, think that can, is, I, I think I, that there's people that have been doing this for 10 years and they still look in the mirror and they say, I don't know how the hell I'm well, doing. And, this. And oh, well, yeah. Here's the thing is like, you can be, we all know the person and it's sad. The person that goes to the gym 
every day and they do the same 20 minutes on the cardio and they don't change anything about their diet and they have bad, you know, they make bad decisions as far as their foods go and they never make any progress, which is a different person than the person that is, is actually setting goals. You know, a person right. that comes in your gym, yeah. who's applying setting all goals, aspects applying it, yeah. all aspects but, of it. I would say for that person, it's very easy for them to feel like a fraud because they know deep down in their heart that, they need to be doing more mm-hmm. if their intent running. is off there. But even yeah. they're, even they're even, checking a box instead of you know even being, not if being you are in shape, yeah. right? I've been in shape and I've still had a hard time looking in the mirror. And that's when I had another realization was like, okay, it's more than fitness, and that's why FTR. It's more than just a gym. It's yeah. more than a workout. It's a way of life. You know, when we do these transformation challenge, and I have this thing called the FTR 100, and it's I know the 75 hard, and I think that's really awesome. I think it's very challenging for most people. I don't think most people are equipped, ready mentally to dive all the way in. Totally. And you know, a lot that's of that's why times, they don't call it 75 lot, medium, right? And a lot of the times when people do that, it's they know they're not ready, but they're trying to be cool and jump on something, but they're taking mm-hmm. their own confidence away. So I kind of created, you know, my FTR 100 in the way that I, that I best, you know, changed my life. And it's 25 days. There's four levels, 25 days, right? We sit down and talk and it's not just working out. It's, Hey, okay, let's talk. Um, so I have uh, my attorney and I have some other people trying it out about the FTR 100. I'm like, Hey, what are some things you want to work on? And she's like, well, I want to make partner. I'm like, okay, cool. What else? Well, uh, I want to get in shape. I'm like, okay, obviously I know that. And then uh, I want to stop having, you know, anxiety and all this stuff. So there's multiple things to do to, to help those journaling, meditating. I do a cold shower every morning and these people are doing it and it's changing their life night and day. And it's more than the workout, right? So it's how can you, you know, push yourself in all these other areas to, you know, change your identity and creating daily habits that daily, are obviously affecting the right, overall outcome. Because yeah. I've been in shape and I've looked good and I've still been insecure and right. I've still been sad right. and I've still been depressed. So it's like, what the fuck? So that's not it. it that's it's, the it's point more, I'm trying to make. It's, the more than, it's like, it's, it's, it's not more about just the, the gym sometimes. And I get you know? what he's, I also, yeah. I get both perspectives, but totally. this, and this well, is we're my personal talk, experience. We're painting with a broad brush because there's lots of different right. types of people. And everyone's experience mm-hmm. and, and, and everyone's experience and, and, and Feelings are valid, right? And yeah. I'm just speaking on the emotions and the, and the thoughts and, and my experiences that I experience. So, not saying my way is the right way. Totally, just, yeah. There's I'm no just, absolute. Here, here's here's my We're question not though. Right. Here's my question though, and this is I feel like I know the answer to this, but when you were looking in the mirror and you were in shape, right, and you were still like, man, I'm still depressed. I'm still I still have anxiety. I still don't feel great about myself. But do you not feel like all of those metrics were still s- elevated versus if you looked in the mirror and you weren't in shape? Yes, I felt I felt better. So it's like you were still like all of those metrics were still headed in the right direction, even though you were like, this isn't the this isn't the holy land. This isn't where I thought the line I graph would. was still like this. Yeah, yeah I was like, mm, yeah, you were still in a better spot. Yeah, I was which de- I would argue for most people. It's like. You know, if you think that getting a six pack is going to solve your depression, you're you're wrong. Right. But if you don't think it's going to help with your self confidence, you're also wrong. I'm 100 percent. Right. 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you're right on the. You dot shouldn't. Uh, there is a lot of people that we've talked to and that we we talk to in the stores that you know they think that they're going to do a bodybuilding show and they're going to look this certain way and then all of a sudden it's going to change the way that they feel about themselves and then when they don't get there, it's like double the depression and then they start eating. You know, they stop. They really realize that I don't have to go do cardio every day. I don't have to eat this certain way. And so then they just pack on pounds after a show because they're like, that wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It didn't cure everything for me. It wasn't the destination they thought it was going to be. And it's like, we do the same thing with money. It's like, I feel like the younger kids today are being told so much so that like money's not like a great thing. And it's just like, dude, uh, it's not the answer. It's not the solution to all problems. But I can tell you right now, you can solve a shitload more of them if you have more of it. Yeah. What are you talking about? Like, I want to make you money. Wanna, you want to do more good in the world. I can promise you, you can do a whole lot more good in the world with money than you right. can without it. So 100%. it's just like, dude, um, don't buy this bale of goods of like, you shouldn't, you know, like the, uh, what's it? The, the love of money is the root of all evil. Not right. money is the root of all evil. Right. No, I, and I agree. You can overlay that. that. Yeah, it's just, that's exactly overlaid with being in shape too. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's not going to solve all your problems, but I can promise you, you're going to feel better about yourself. Oh, I, it, and you're going to be in a position where you can solve your problems a lot easier because you're not taking up all this space with all your health issues. 100%. Oh, so, like I said, broad brush, 
but I think we're all nailing nailing the points here, and I agree with both. It's it, it definitely helps, but it doesn't cure everything. Mm-hmm. And there's other tools that I try to teach people that have worked for me. Now, if you want to try them, great. I'm pretty sure they work. Uh, it, I mean, cold showers. I don't know if you guys are fans of cold showers, but I'm actually going to challenge you guys to start get in the shower, start it in hot, but just get in there and take those 30 seconds every day. It sets the tone. It's good, dude. It sets the damn tone. Like it's crazy. You actually feel high. Oh yeah. You get out. You're like, dude. Sometimes I I feel so overwhelmed. Sometimes I feel so overwhelmed with all this shit I got to do that I like have this anxiety, anxious, and I'm like cold, Mm. cold, cold bath. I'll load up the bath, and he's seen it. Ice, and I'll just sit there, and then it's gone, and then I'm like, fuck, I'm in my head. Here's here's a, a hot take. I think. Getting in a shower, getting a nice warm shower going, and then hitting like a couple minutes with a cold shower is worse than getting in an ice bath. It's funny you say <laughs> okay, that. I, I, I feel the exact opposite. It's of you terrible. That. Well, it depends. I, I've I did never, phase one let on me 75 say, hard, and uh, I failed, just to be clear. I didn't right. finish it. I've, I've, I got through 75 hard, and then I tried phase one. I was like nine days in, and I just remember getting into the cold shower because I didn't go hot to cold. I just like walked into the shower cold and bro, I would way rather start hot. No, 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 no. I'm literally just saying that versus a cold plunge. Oh, okay. You get what I'm saying? Like, you think that's harder than a cold plunge? I think a cold plunge. Shit. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm I'm on team. uh, Team one. I I, I would way rather get in a cold plunge. Here's, here's the reason I say that. Go cold shower. Because if you get in a shower, you're going to make it warm water. You're going to get soaking. I want to hear this. Just listen to my, I want to hear it. I've done both. I've done both quite a bit. So one, when you get into a shower, you're going to get it hot first. So it's, you're like putting yourself in a mentality of like, Ooh, this is nice. You know, this is cozy. Yeah. But then you turn the shower on and then you have to stand there in it, right? And you also have the knob in front of you. You can always turn that knob back to hot, right? Cold plunge, when you get in there, I mean, you get into it and there's no, you can't change anything about your environment. You're basically just stuck in there and you're sitting in there. Which makes it easier for me. So you can't stay. That's what I'm saying. It's easier. Agreed. So it, I think it's easier than a cold shower. No, I, I get what you're saying. I'd rather not do what the fuck you're just saying. Yeah, they're both. But I'm going to do it because I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. now so, I'm going to start doing so that. So the other way around, like, so we talked about this random, like, this is a random variable, but, like, getting into a shower that's already cold, for me, way worse because of what you're saying. The knob is right there. Yeah. Right? I'm like, dude, I would love to turn this hot right now. This is awful. You right? also, when you're. But I could stand in there hot and then turn it cold and chill. And be fu- way better. But, like, for whatever reason, getting into a cold shower, for me, is way harder than getting into a cold plunge. Takes and I've done soul. both. It takes my soul. You know, Dude, and the you, truth is, Kyle, you don't really cold plunge unless you video it anyway. That's probably true. <laughs> that's <laughs> if you, hey, if you that's did, another uh, fucked up thing. I've never video, I've never really videoed that shit. That's well, for me. because you didn't do it, dude. That's, oh, okay. No, but <laughs> that, that shit's for you. You, uh, I, laugh. I just laugh at, like, yeah. If you I mean, get into a cold probably plunge. Be the most, probably be the most, like, if we, if we, if we clip this one up. Uh, this will be the most engaged post we could ever make on protein bros. But hey, people will get hurt. Through the complexities. People of it. will get hurt because we're poking the truth. I, I, I also <laughs> want to add the context of like, I've never gotten in one of those cold plunge tubs that circulates the water, which everyone says is way worse. Cause you create a thermal layer when mm-hmm. like the only ones I've ever done is in a bucket there. You get in the bucket, you know, after you've been in there 20 seconds, you create a thermal layer, which is supposed to make it a little bit easier. Um, which the plunge tubs circulate water, which stop the thermal layer from, from forming. And it's supposed to be way worse. Never knew Never that. done that. I know nothing about this, yes. but is that the similar vibe then to a cold shower? Cause you, could you, you create you, a thermal layer if you're just getting sprayed? No, you can't. That's why a yeah, cold awful. shower just stays cold <laughs> as yeah. hell. Um, anyways, Funny yeah, talk. either way, I think both of them make you feel like a crazy rush of endorphins and the, the, what you get out of it, like mentally, the 30 minutes after you get out of a cold shower or cold plunge is, is incredible. Plus the fat loss, yeah. right? Have you, it, the, your, your body temperature goes up, you burn more fat. I mean, it, it's all been proven and these are doctors saying it. I mean, I'm not, I didn't make this up. This is, Hey man, hydroxy cut works. Doctors talk about it all the, the time. The, I'm just joking. The easy way, the, the, the easy <laughs> way. Hydroxy, white lab coat. hydroxy cut this, with ephedrine. When yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my thing. The easy way works for how long? Yeah. Oh, of course, dude. That's I, uh, so. I think like, oh, this is easy for how long? Yeah. My theory on on um, you know cold plunge, whatever you know um, chosen form of struggle that you pick to ground yourself, it should do exactly that. Ground you, bring you back mm-hmm. to where you're at. Right. 
emotionally regulate yourself. That's right? kind of that's one of the self suit, yeah. whatever it may be. Like it's a way to ground yourself and bring you back, right? Yeah. Uh, if you're having a mental day, like you were saying, I'm having a hard day. I can do that and bring me right back to, to center. And I still have mm-hmm. hard days. We still have hard days. It's a journey. People see, oh, yeah. you, you own your gym. You, you own. And I'm like, I still have hard days. Dude, but, but we nobody have, has great days every tools. day. We have tools. We have tools. Working out. Mm-hmm. That's a tool. Journaling. Meditating. Cold shower. Mm-hmm. Reading. You know, I love you. That Like mm-hmm. showing love. Uh, we start the class, five things you're grateful for. Mm-hmm. You you can't pick you can't start the damn tread you can't go get a band my god dude, you I only do that on Thanksgiving it's, it's, it's five things, of- <laughs> <laughs> it's five things you're grateful yeah. for and it's not it's more than that people are like oh I'm grateful for this I'm grateful for that okay hold on what if you lost one of those things how would everything switch feel that now be grateful and then that's how we start the class bam that's a vibe perspective dude it's a vibe, it's a vibe. Hey. and then I get in there and I'm like hey get your ass running yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> You guys told me what you want. Y'all fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I did. You guys came to me and you told me everything you wanted. I'm just here to, to, to hold you. You told me what you give I'm up to make it happen, yeah. too. Yeah, I'm going to make sure that oh, you're going to give it up. Hey, yeah. if, you, if you don't come to class, I'm calling you. Yeah. I, I'm not a charity. I tell people that all the time. You, you can see my phone. Like, it's every day. I mean, all the way till 10 p.m. It, it, people can contact me all, anytime. And uh, that's kind of like the other thing. We're building, you know, a family. Um, uh, we don't just train the parents. We we also train the kids. We train youth sports now, and we we teach them the, the ways and, and being like, hey, be a good person. Hey, what do you want to achieve? We ask them the questions. And these kids that are 10, 12 years old are answering, what do you want? Why do you want it? Really making them think. And then, and then showing them what that equation looks like of getting something and achieving something. Uh, whether it's losing weight, becoming faster, starting a business. Yeah, working towards a goal. It's all been the same equation for me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uncomfortable. A lot of the times I don't want to do this shit, but mm-hmm. I do it. And over that you compound and you get, and you, and you grow and you, you learn. And if you got to pivot, great. But on top of that, you get results and you learn. That's life's about, we're never going to figure it out. Even when we die, there's going to be, we never have it figured out. There's no one that has had it figured out, but I do ask like 90 year olds. Hey, if you, if we're 30, if you were 20, what is something that you would tell yourself? And a lot of them, it's like, enjoy life, be around your loved ones, you know, do the right thing, be a good person, jump, to, uh, do everything you can. And it, it it's over and over again. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I try to remember that even on the hard days. And that's another thing that keeps me grounded um, is that, you know, we are going to end and that's okay, but let's make sure that we help and we have a purpose before we go. Because it's easy to go, I could go work a warehouse job, make decent money, uh, live an okay life, which is, I feel like it's a lot of Americans. And that's okay, no judgment that my parents did that. But I don't want that for our families. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for anybody. Uh, Everyone can get it. Everyone can shine. What is it? Not everyone's willing to go through that shit that we had to go through. And we don't even got to say it. I can just say that and you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, the uh, the parents thing, I kind of always look at it like a s- stepping stone. So like generations kind of go in stepping stones if you have good parents. You know, my dad worked at, you know, Boeing. You know, my mom worked at Boeing, you know, in jobs that I would never want to work so I could have the opportunity that I have. 100%. You know, s- same thing with you guys. You know, even to a bigger extent, you know, because your parents, you know, migrated here to a different country, you know, and because they knew that there was opportunity here you know, and they, they worked their ass off to give you guys the opportunity to be able to step into a different, you know, social economic status. You know what I'm saying? Right. Which is, which is a big deal. That's a big why for yeah. me. I'm not even going to lie. Can mm-hmm. I talk to you guys a little bit more about Mexican culture? Cause it's something that we, I don't, I don't truly know a lot about. Jeff loves churros, but that's so, about it. Churros <laughs> how, I, I mean, Let's start with this question here. How many Mexicans have you seen in shape? Well, I was actually going to say like, the only thing I know about Mexican culture is that like, there's just not a whole lot of in shape people. The obesity rates higher in, in Mexican uh, culture than it would be in most others. We, yeah, we know nothing about nutrition. We know nothing about working out. We know get a raise, work overtime, work mm-hmm. your ass off. That's that's it. Work hard, but not smart. That's what I, how I would describe uh, describe the Mexican culture. Hard working motherfuckers. Are you hard, guys, are you guys making an impact on that? That's what I want. I want to know. Like, 
you know, Not, what's the population uh, of Mexicans in, in, at the FTR gym? You know what I mean? So yeah, that's, that's the funny thing. I want to like, how do we attack and, that? And it's, it's fucking hard because how do you teach old dogs, new tricks? Right. And in the Mexican culture, it's like, this is how it's been done. This is the way it is. So they don't really have an open mindset. And we want to change that for those who want to listen. Look, I'm not going totally. to, I'm not going to beg you. No, I've told, you know, I have, can we like give a deal to like kids that are under 18 Yeah, or something like that? 100%. You know what I mean? Like, so we can change well, it. Well, I feel like change uh, it from like the inside feel, out, you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Like start, start them young. I, I feel like, you know, kids of migrant parents, like plenty are in athletics, plenty are into to working out. It's the, it's the older generation or the generations that are first, you know, first generation Americans that it's probably harder to change their mindset. Is that right? Yeah. No, yeah. 100%. Yeah. And even if you go look at, uh, my dad is doing such a fucking great job. He's eating healthy. He's down about 50 pounds, uh, blood pressure. He's taking cold showers every day. He texts me today. He's like, hey, I'm on day 14, just straight cold showers. Yeah, there you That's go. my dad. That's the man. Dude, he That's looks awesome, awesome man. Uh, yeah. He looks great. Hardest working man I've ever met. That's awesome, man. But he didn't work. He never worked smart. And that broke my heart. And uh, people took advantage of him. Hey, one of the things that he did was that was smart was he moved here. That's true. Right? Yep. So you're not going to make all the right decisions, right? How cool, man. I love that you guys get to share that with your dad, man. That's so special. He's such a great guy. But uh, yeah, man, I, uh, he's. He's uh, changing, and he and my mom's a little hard. She's a little uh, can't really teach her. The, the she's going slow. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. my dad's kind of jumped in a little bit more. Sure. Uncles and aunts, they don't. And I don't associate too much with my my family, just because if if you don't want to grow, if you if you're not moving a certain way, then I don't care who you are. I I can't really have you in my life because now you're 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 taking away from. Others that I can help, whether you're family or not, a human's a human, Mm -hmm. you know, and family, family is Earl's family. He doesn't have to be blood. That's, that's family. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my, my attorney, that's my attorney, but that's, that's family. I I go over there on 4th of July. I go over there on Christmas. They, they give me, you know, birthday presents. They, I train all the kids. I mentor all the kids. Um, it's, it's more, it's more than, 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 you know. So I love that, man. Uh, I wish more people had that mentality. You know, there's so many people that are tied to their family, not because of uh, anything besides that they're, they feel like they're supposed to. And, and it's just not a strong influence for them because they're not there. You know, they basically if there's a lot of family members out there, I feel like that I see that just don't know how to lead themselves. And unfortunately they project all that onto their kids and um, let, don't let the kids think for themselves on those things. Yeah. And a lot of the times, you know, you're a visionary and, and you speak things into existence. How you guys were telling us earlier how you were saying all these things before it ever happened. I was saying the same stuff and they were looking at me like, what's wrong with dude? Or like, he's like, is he okay? And it hurt to have your own family not believe in you, let alone, I'm already struggling with believing in myself and wanting to live. But, uh, so after that, I kind of just disconnected and was like, okay, I'm going to focus on those who, who want to help, um, those who actually, you know, believe in me, whether you're family or not. And it was hard because the Mexican family is deep. Tight. Like we, we're yeah. tight. And uh, just because we're blood doesn't mean we got to be tight. Well, I, that dude, that just goes back to the grit thing. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to go through the phase of like no one believes in you. Like for us, we had to hear people be like, oh, yeah, you still getting promised that store that you guys are yeah. going to open? Oh, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, work on cool. that vitamin hey, I got a question cool. for you. I got, a, uh, I got a question for you guys on that. And it's it's more because, like, I kind of go through it sometimes, too. It's like, so when people were saying that shit, that motivates you. That pushes the wagon a little bit, moves the boat a little bit. I had so did, ever, did it ever yeah. pivot? Or is it, and I could be totally wrong, but was that ever your driving force? Or like these motherfuckers, like I'm going to, I know I'm going to do this uh, and I'm going to prove them wrong. Was that ever a driving force? And then it pivoted to, I want to help people. Uh, there's two, I mean, and Kyle might have a completely different answer than me on this, but um, you know, the people that I was trying to prove wrong, uh, I didn't know who they were in my mind. I, I just had a, a chip on my shoulder from a very young age of I'll show, you know, whoever, I had like a superiority complex mixed with a, like an unbelievable feeling of never being enough. Okay. And so like I was just chasing success so hard. Um, 
knowing that like I wouldn't be able to be right with myself unless I did. And I felt like I knew a lot about business and I just never felt like I had the clout or the proof that I felt like I needed to feel secure in that. And so like that just pushed me every single day when no one was around all the time. And uh, now it's about helping people and more importantly, helping dude, helping our team. It's all about the people that work for us that have believed in us, that have shared our dream, our vision that have helped us get there. And I got to make sure that they realize theirs. And it's like, I mean, it, it, it beats 10 times harder so than cool. my, than my insecurities such from before. Great, you guys are such great leaders and I barely know you, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, f- for me, you know, the, the people that I would hear that from were not people that I would take advice from. So it didn't, it was like a net net. It was just like nothing to me. Okay. You know, cause it was like, uh, like you said, I'm like, I had the supporter complex. Like I'm like, if I was hearing that, I'm just like, well, I know more about business than you in my head. I'm like, pfft. I mean, like I was arrogant about that. I'm like, I don't even care about your opinion on business anyway. So don't yeah. worry. Yeah. I, w- I would always <laughs> just be like, well, we'll see, <laughs> you know, Time like, will tell. yeah, we'll see, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know one thing for a fact that, you know, I'm working 70 hours a week right now and I'm working in a store that's freaking blowing up, you know, and, uh, I'd say that there's a pretty good chance that this works out, you know, right. Judge if you become, watching, yeah, you're yeah. watching your business double, you're like, okay, I'm pretty sure we know what we're doing here. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, if you have somebody that's saying that and they're, you know, working some dead end job, it's like, well, I mean, I'm probably going to take your opinion on that with a grain of salt. The, the hard one to overcome is the parents, you know, Loved because ones, yeah. par- parents are looking, they legitimately, and here's the truth about parents. A lot of times when, you know, they have kids best interests in mind and a lot of times they're not wrong. Right. So a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of parents, when they hear, you know, um, you're going to work at this retail job and you're going to, you know, it's, you're going to turn it into a career that, you know, retail jobs aren't careers and they're right. You know what I'm saying? Most, most, most retail, jobs, retail aren't jobs aren't, aren't careers, you right. know? And so it's really hard to, um, you know, it's hard to overcome that. And I went through that where it's like, you know, I had a college degree. And so it's like, you know, doing the convincing of like, Hey, I don't need to use my college degree. This is going to be better than my college degree. This is going to be better than what I was studying in, in college. And I realized that I went to college and spent a bunch of time on getting that. But like, I'm telling you right now that this is going to be a better path for me. Um, that's a hard conversation for most people to have. And a lot of people fold in that conversation. 100%. A lot of people I got to give Kyle some credit here because Kyle worked for three years um, at, at an hourly level um, in the store before he got his first raise. And he his first raise got him to $12 an hour. That was his first raise. And it took him three years to get that. That's so cool. And like, everybody's like, man, like I need to, you know, do we have guys that talk to us all the time? And if there was like anything I could just fucking love to just burn in the brains of the people that work for us, it's like, nobody cares what you make when you're 23 years old. Right. Nobody cares. Just survive. You're fine. You know what I mean? Like, it right. doesn't matter what you drive. It doesn't like, as long as you can get from A to B, as long as you have a place to sleep and you're comfortable in that bed, you're fine. But right. on the like, back side it's just of like that, it, nobody does not matter. What opportunity are you in? Right. On the back side right. of that, be working for a place. You know, what's crazy to me is that, you know, there's so many young people out there that, that have this mis- misconception about work. It's like, you got to know what you want out of work, right? So if you are looking to grow and you want to have the opportunity to manage or you want to have the opportunity for bigger, you know, positions, when you sit down in a podcast or when you sit, not a podcast, in an interview, when you sit down in an interview and they say, do you have any questions for us? You need to be asking, well, who, who here at, at, in, in this building or this company just sat right here interviewing for this job and who, who has the highest paying job now out of them? What's the highest earning potential in this building right now? Who is that person? Right. Show me where they're at. I want to look at what's the upward mobility, right? right? Because a lot of jobs, what people do is they'll, you know, they get pitched the, hey, man, you get this benefit. Hey, man, you get this, you know, the, these weekends off. Here's this, this, and this, right? And so kids are like, oh, this job's awesome, right? And then they get sucked into that job, and then they're forever in that job. And they're like, wait, I can't move up? They're like, no, 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 that's, that's you, not for you. I got, I got one that's thing not I for you. I got a question about <laughs> you two real quick, and this is very important because – and sometimes it's, it's challenging. That's my brother. And, and sometimes it's hard to differentiate the brother connection with, you know, the leadership role. Being a business partner. <laughs> and and one of the things that my brother had to do was jump. 
you know, I wasn't able to pay him what he was already making. So he had to make a sacrifice. And obviously I had these projections of moving a lot faster and we didn't. And it's, it's been, you know, a year and he's stuck by my side, but there's times where he does get frustrated because of, you can't pay your bills all the time. It, it's challenging, right? So it does cause some friction there. Um, and you were saying like, when you interview someone like, you know, do they see the vision? Right. Are they willing you, how much you sacrifice fucking three years for that shit? Oh, and, dude, and there's did, definitely, and did, you didn't even bitch. Like, Oh, he bitched all the time. Oh, did he? Okay, okay. So he, he did. Bitch. Hey, no, so, yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Kyle bitching is not the same. So, as what other advice would you have for yeah. my for my brother? As you see, what FDR? Well, he, he, you know, here's the thing: is like me and Jeff. You know, I, I was a district manager before moving to Kansas City and opening up in Kansas City. So I was I was one of the highest paid guys that we had in in St. Louis. I got paid pretty Kyle, well. Kyle made over and, six figures his last year working at us. And so, yeah. and then I I went and we opened up Kansas City. We didn't pay ourselves for three years. So you want to talk about a jump? It was basically like, I'm going to go from this salary that I had become accustomed to, to making no money for three years, right? It took us three years. We took like, just like what you're saying, we take every dollar that we made. And we were like, we're going to pump this back into the business. We're going to pump this back into the business because we know that if we're going to create the culture that we want to create here, we have to be reinvesting. This is not, this is not a, you know, a time that we should be trying to take money out of the business. We should just be pumping money into the business. And, um, you know, it was at that time, it, it, it's just one of those things. You just have to believe in the, in the long-term picture. You know what I'm saying? If you believe in the long-term picture and you have a formula that works, all you have to do is keep banging that formula and it's eventually going to turn out, you know, profitable. Guys, we talked about core values earlier and our, we always say to our team that believe, believe is one of our core values, but believe is the number one most important because without it, the rest of the values don't matter. Right. You have to have that because it's in those times where you want to quit that the belief has to take over and make sure that it keeps you on path. Right. And so I want to go back to like the trap that is when you accept a job and so forth, like Kyle was talking about, because it's so important. It's something, honestly, I didn't ever even thought of until we're having this conversation now. So it's organic, but someone's talking to you and they're like, all right, dude, there was a time in everybody's life. Like you, you felt it, you felt it. Everybody in this room has felt it because you had made that jump already. Right where your friends are talking to you about like the job they got and they talk to you about the benefits. They talk about, you know, the, the projections of where it's going and so forth. And they're like, yeah, man, they said like, you know, I can, you know, get promoted to do this and, and, you know, I get paid this, this, this. And it's like, most people are all hearing is like, this is all I have to do to guarantee myself to get X, Y, and Z. Right. Play. Yeah, the safe and, play. and it's like, they don't look at it as a safe though, because right. everybody's doing it. Right. It's not. And there, and, and other people are getting way more than them and, and, or they're doing way better than other people. It's like when you're in high school and everybody's getting those high school jobs, everybody has kind of the same jobs, right? Working in a warehouse, I'm working in retail, fun, I'm working fun. at, you know, a gas station, I'm working as a server. Everybody's just trying to figure out, you know, like how do I do the least amount of work and get paid the most money? And eventually someone raises their hand and they're like, you know what? I actually do want to work really hard and I do want to work really hard and make more money long term. I'm not really looking to see like what I can get away with and get paid the most doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. But like when I was in college, I had friends who was like, dude, I'm going to be a TSA agent. He was 20 years old. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm going to work for T. He's like, dude, I get paid, I get paid $33 an hour. Oh, I hear that all the time. And I'm like, but like he was, he also became a lawyer, but he was doing this while he was in college. Mm. And I was like, man, that's smart. <laughs> like he was thinking like that, but the amount of people that would just be like, well, I don't need to go to school anymore. I'm just going to do this because it's 33 bucks an hour. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you're like, well, this isn't fulfilling. Now what do I do? Right. And then some midlife crisis has happened and so on and so forth. But it's just so funny that when you start hearing about how people talk about the best parts of their job, but they're talking about what they're guaranteed without having to work hard is like, well, we already know who you are. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 100%. So it's, uh, it's just funny. Like, um, There's got to be a mental shift where you stop thinking about what's guaranteed because if it's guaranteed, then everybody gets it. Right. Right? If you want what nobody else has, you have to be able to willing yeah. to do what nobody else will do. You also you also work condition conditionally when you're in that mindset. So it's like, yeah, I'll work that hard if I get this thing, right? And It's a trade for trade. And what we're in, it's not a trade for trade. It's no. a belief. No, you got to believe. Belief, work, and belief. It's who you fucking are. Yeah. It's, it's what it the is. the difference. It, 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 like you said, you remember you were saying like, I don't know how people know uh, 
go back and, you know, work, you know, a cubicle or a warehouse, which is fine. Once they get into an ownership right. mindset, it, it's, you can't go back to being like, well, now I'm just going to be a pawn. It's literally fucking impossible for me. Mm-hmm. I, no, I would th- agree as it, well. It, it's literally, if there's something that I don't like to you or to use impossible, but I think for me, it's impossible. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to, I think well, that's a perfect I got fired possible. this last time and I was like, I'm never getting fired again ever. Ever. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to become the boss that I wish I had. I'm going to become the trainer. I wish I had, I'm going to become the person I wish I had when I was facing those dark times. And that's really how I've lived my life. And that's how everything came, has became into fruition. Yeah, so, man. I'm, I'm so excited for cool, you guys. Man. I mean, it's been so fun to hear your guys' story and, and uh, all the things you guys got going on. I'm going to be so excited to see like the progression of FTR and, and how you guys decide to do one versus two and what changes are going to be made. And, uh, you know, we look forward to getting, Just getting you guys back on here. Remember again. gas down, dude. What if there was a tip? Cause I feel like you guys have passed the level that we're at, but you've been there in a, in a certain way. What would you do if you were us? What advice would you have for us? We already told you on the podcast, this is too much of a gimme, but it's just create those core values and radically uh, protect them as far as your culture, your community, and uh, the people that work for you. Everybody has to represent what you guys represent as a brand. Yeah, I I would say, you know, at this stage that you're at right now, you understand that your best marketing um, is going to come through your your members, right? So word of mouth marketing is absolutely going to be the most valuable thing. It's still the most valuable thing to us, right? We can run, you know, social media ads, you know, uh, radio ads, all of those. And people know that you pay for them, right? When you get a genuine recommendation for a place, it, you know, if your mom recommends a place to you, you trust your mom, you're like, yeah. damn, I got to go. Tr- I got to go try that place out. So remember that like every day you have an opportunity to do something that is huge for somebody that creates them feeling like they owe you something, right? right? When somebody leaves the gym and they're like, bro, you know, they, they, they came to my, my birthday party. They got me a birthday present. They did, you know, there's a million different things you can do in that situation and understand that when you create that dynamic of them feeling like you've provided so much value to them, they're going to want to repay you for that. And the way that most customers repay you for that is they talk about your brand to somebody else. And they do. Yeah. And I love our people for that. And they just do. double down on that. Dude. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. when you're, when you're starting out and even for us, it's, it's, Luke, what's 90% of our meetings? Are they not about those things? You know, they're Do about- you ask? Because one of the things I ask don't what like, I love to help people. I don't really like to ask for help. Okay. So it's like, why do I have a problem asking someone, hey, can you make a post about, you know, the gym and how I feel? I feel like I'm almost begging, but at the same time, I've gave so much in well, return, well, but I, I, I'm not doing it for that, for the, for here, I'm giving for, you this, do you, that. You want it to be organic. Exactly. For, first of all, you know, like for us here in the store, we used to get a lot of people that'd be like, dude, I feel like I need to give you a tip or something like that. Right. Do you guys get that kind of stuff where they're like, I feel like I should give you more like blah, 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 blah. That's when you deploy like, well, Hey man, if you really want to help me out, like, you know, writing a Google re- review would be awesome or posting about us on social media would be awesome. But like, really, you know, those are the only things for us. We're just trying to help as many people as possible. And those things could help. Yeah. And I, that, that's what I love about you guys. And that's why I kind of tell people, Hey, we've partnered with us too. And you know, they're willing to do uh, free scans as, as many as you want. And they're even uh, willing to give you guys a meal plan with, you know, the expert, because I don't have, I know what to eat. I've done it right. But legally right i don't have um that's not your so, guys's background it's not yeah, my yeah. jam it's not yeah. my jam and anyways it's not really my jam so why not mm-hmm. give it to some i trust and, yeah, yeah. and, and then yeah. and then i like to i like to recommend people this too because i just uh, know you guys are very genuine and authentic and that's that's very um very valuable for me so that's dude that's, that's one of the things that i love about you guys and especially thing. shout out to nick uh he's been Nick's amazing for the Dude, past two our manager of the year man. five hey, years. I, i've met nick work. since uh orange spirits you know since the studio so nick's solid so. Nick, nick's rare he yeah. literally nick's just won rare. Our, he nick. just won our manager of the year award nick's yeah. rare. and our core values award it's our highest achievement yeah that yeah, dude, man. that dude's for real. We, uh, I mean, Spider-Man we recognize himself, him for being dude. rare. Yeah. No, don't get his head too big though. Spider-Man yeah. <laughs> himself. If he's listening Impossible. to this. But, uh, uh, I, I would say that that's a big thing too, is like, you know, in business, be honest, be transparent. You know, that's the big thing yeah. is, uh, don't, you know, you get, you get a lot of people like to throw things at you where it's like, Oh, you know, here's a way you could cut a corner. Here's a way you could, you know, do something that, you know, 
It's like, dude, just absolutely not. You guys want to hear something funny? Sure. Uh, People are like, you know, how fast am I going to? And I'm like, look, I'm not Amazon. I don't do two day shipping. I'm more the shit that you ordered overseas. You forgot you ordered and then it came. (laughs) That's how how the results are going to go here. But they're going to be sustainable. Yeah. It's going to be, you're you're going, it's going to be who you are. It's going to be your identity. Right. And I'll send you guys a cool video on identity and how there's four phases. Right. And how to get to the final phase of finally who you are. But uh, you have to go through, you know, decep- inception, deception, and then people usually circle back through that. They're like, oh, new workout. Oh, new year. And they go, mm-hmm. oh, inception. Like, oh, shit, I can do all these things. And then deception hits like, oh, shit, I can't go out with my friends and drink on Friday. Oh, shit, I got to follow a diet. Fuck it. I'm, oh, we only live once. I'm just going to fuck it. And then they do it again next year or uh, mm-hmm. New Year's new comes epiphany, along. New and motivation. It, and, and, yeah. and I tell people, man, that shit's bullshit. And I used to do it every fucking year. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, man, I had one more thing for you, but I can't. Uh, it's not coming to top of mind anymore. But I screwed um, you. I, I interrupted you. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, right. buddy. You guys are, uh, like I said, you guys are killing it. Um, like, uh, I'm just excited to have met you guys. I appreciate the, the, the positive shout outs you've given our team and our staff and, um, that means a lot to us because we don't get to, you know, that's why we do this podcast. Yeah. We don't get to work the counter anymore. And I want my team to hear me say that like, we, we don't get to work the counter anymore because it's truly a privilege right. to be able to cross paths with so many people right. every day. And, you know, some of the very best friends I've ever met. I, I'm the best man in a wedding in two and a half weeks from somebody that I met uh, through the stores. And I'm going on his bachelor party tomorrow morning. I got that's more badass. family at FTR than I do. And, and it's freaking awesome. Yeah, Genuine. Man. And uh, since we're shouting out people when you like to hear, Paula, mm-hmm. amazing. She makes all my girls feel so good about themselves and letting them know and that it's going to be okay and that they do struggle with, you know, they have different things that she they struggle she with. She doesn't forget what it's like to and be started She's off. been there. That's right. She's been there. She has a story, right? No and, doubt. And I love that about her. So, uh, and she's a go-getter, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah, she's great. Just wanted to shout her out. Uh, I like to give people praise where it's well-deserved. Um, and that's well deserved over there. Yeah, back, awesome, man. And, and we, you know, we can talk more later about just like, uh, you know, how do I foster more reviews where it's their idea? You know, how do I, you know, scale this business from one to two? It's the hardest, hardest thing we ever did in business was going from one store to two stores. Um, because it's, it's no, no longer your baby, it's somebody else's, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, you have to watch them do it and you can't, you don't get to jump in. That's going to be hard as shit for me. Yeah. I mean, I can, I mean, I already know. That's why we're talking about it right now. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, boy, if Bro, you, if you only uh, know what you're about to it's, go through. Well, that's where the values take over. Like we were saying, and mm-hmm. it's like, dude, it's going to be, you know, man, I had a, we were, we were fortunate enough to be on uh, Matt Carstetter's podcast on the foundation. That was the most recent podcast where we were guests on. Right. And uh, Matt told us a story um, that was really special. And it was, um, he had a member who we all knew and the, this member, we hadn't talked to him in a while. Okay. Uh, been years since we've seen this guy, but he was well known in the fitness community and he had an accident where he really hurt himself and uh, he was in the hospital. And the next day, you know, Matt said, I thought I'd do something, you know, nice for him and, you know, come up to the hospital and say hi to him and visit him. And he said he walked in and sure enough, there was a guy from supplement superstores in there shaking up a protein shake for him to keep him, help him keep his gains Dude, you guys are in the hospital that's, bed. And bro, so cool. we had never heard this Kyle story. And, Kyle and I never even knew the fucking thing happened. We didn't even hear the story. We didn't even know. And it's because of it's who they are, not because we taught them. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we truly hire people based on these values and then we reward the people who embody those values. And so people stick with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, the, the phrase I'd like to use here, and this might've been back to what I was thinking about trying to say earlier is we hear all the time that like good help is hard to find. And it's like, well, that, while that is true, but the thing is, is that the good help more often than not, if you're doing it right, is created. And I think that's what you guys have done. And that's why I feel very inspired. And what's the word I'm looking for? I know it can be done because you guys did it. So I am going to be blowing you guys up for questions, if that's okay, because I love to learn. And obviously you guys have done it. And part of the reason we're at where we're at is because we love to learn and we know that we don't have it figured out. And we look up to people that have done it. We don't, yeah. we, we don't hate on them. We're like, fuck, that's so cool. You guys made the jump. I mean, I think we we're that? in the same boat, you know, cause we, we haven't done anything yet. You know, we're still in a, we're in a growth phase and you know, uh, me and Jeff don't, don't pretend to know everything, you know, cause we don't, we're still learning every day, just like you guys. Right. So that's, well, what's going to make us 
grow and, and get to where we want yeah. by that. Humility, like, you got to have it, yeah. man. <laughs> Business is going to humble you anyways. <laughs> Keep the main thing the main thing. Yeah. There you go. Right. Yeah. Who made that so up? D- I heard that song. Okay. No, I thought sure. it was Andy. A lot of this shit, I was like, is that Andy? No, no. Uh, I mean, like... Uh, we do rip got, off Andy a lot. He's got a lot of Andy's got a lot of Andyism. I got to tell you guys something funny real quick, and mm-hmm. I know if you guys got to go rep... Um, so I was tearing up earlier and it had nothing to do with anything. And it's because, uh, Andy, I kind of watched some of his stuff and I thought it's, it's very, it res- resonates with what I am. And, I'm, and if like, I kind of have that, you know, Andy has that, Hey motherfucker. Like I kind of have that intensity. And, yeah. yeah. That intensity. And I've envisioned me talking to him and like sitting down and being like, thank you. And, and tearing up and, you know, him being like, man, like, yeah, man, like, you got it. Like, keep going. Like, I've envisioned that. So, you guys ever see him, you know, even if I don't meet him, uh, tell him that, you know, he's he's helped. He's helped. Well, I'll tell you sure. what, man, we're going to see him soon. He's going to be on the podcast soon. So, we'll just video you, whatever you want to tell him. We'll just show it to him. We'll send it to him. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. That'd, be, That'd awesome. be awesome. If he wants to send a video back or something, we'll let it be his idea. Yeah. But we'll absolutely show him exactly how you feel. Just, just make sure he's having a good day. <laughs> You'll help him have a good day if he's not, so don't worry. Yeah, you cool. know you're cool. Well, thank mm-hmm. you. Uh, we asked one question to every single one of our guests on here, and I'd love to hear your guys' feedback. We haven't Bro, had a Mexican no, culture no. feedback answer yet. What I was gonna say, we should edit this to make it f- more fitting. Okay, go ahead. I was gonna say, so normally we ask what's the best barbecue in Kansas City, mm-hmm. but Ooh. I was gonna say authentic Mexican food. San Antonio. Uh, yes. Uh, what's it called? Uh, San Antonio's off Kansas shit. Avenue. But everyone's different. You can go, Kev. You, I, I'm saying San Antonio's off Kansas Avenue. You go in there, you think you're in Mexico. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. There's multiple San Antonio's locations. Yeah, but you got to go to the one, and that's the thing where they fucked up. They didn't keep it the same everywhere. Uh, okay. Mexicans, we don't. <laughs> Get that fucking part, not right? systematized, you know, right? And if they would have systematized it, they would be multi millionaires, right yeah. Now. And uh, what about you? What do you think right now for like the past uh three years or so? I'll say Carmen's Casino, shit, yes, fuck. Carmen's Casino, their family owned, um, bro, or the, first ever, the first ever supplement superstore is a customer appreciation barbecue. Carmen's Casino was our food truck. You, so, you, you guys gave know, it away for free to all. Yeah, of yeah. his name is Luis. Yeah, 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 yeah Luis. Solid. Yeah, he was yeah. awesome. Amazing family, I right there on the corner. The, I was thinking in the hood. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking yeah. downtown Kansas City in the hood, not Olathe base. Um, I was my, thinking like my favorite spot. Where all the Mexicans are at. Well, tell me that because you guys have never been here or not, but uh, dude, it's it's. Um, Michigan, Michigan, in Santa Fe, or this is the, this, this is on like Minnesota in KCK. Oh, you you're down there. But Bonita, <laughs> is it Bonita, Michigan? It's up in Michigan. Yes, yeah, that's yes, exactly. Yep. Yes. And, yeah. and they're I feel like it's very similar to San Antonio. Yes, right? same thing. And there's Mexican a couple grocery store that's yep. got the cafeteria yep. line. Yep, for I would tacos. Say that's they make the tacos right in front of you. Yeah, and well, there's another one, Toritos. Benito, Benito, on the Chicane, I, I don't know why, but I but I go to that spot. I like I take people there all the time because I live downtown. Okay, and so it's uh yeah. Dude, the, they used to be still 99 cent tacos on Tuesdays, those street tacos, and now I do the El Pastor. There El Pastor, did El you Pastor. put pineapple on yours? Of course. He said it. Of course. My guy. What My about guy. Machaca? You guys fans? I haven't of heard of that one. See, are you not saying it right? Per, I'm not, probably not. He said <laughs> Machaca? I mean, that's all I heard. It's, it's beef, shredded beef. Let's call him on. Hey, how about <laughs> barbacoa? Hey, she's gonna she go look at that. She's always like, got barbacoa. You can't wrench that. <laughs> but no, uh, so uh, shout out. Um, I got I to gotta tell the story because it's too good. But whenever uh, we were working in the original store across the street, there was a restaurant that always went out of business. Like there was a new restaurant in there every year. And eventually one op- opened it up called Purple Burrito. And they were California Mexican people. And they did California style Mexican food out there. Where it was like California style burritos. Where they it was like, like the first time I had authentic tacos. Like I was like, dude. These and are- burritos. But yeah, they named a burrito. We got a class in Shout 20 out. minutes. All right, yeah. shit. All right, y'all. All right. So, but we we'll can do. We let's wrap it up real quick. I'll get about to, two to, minutes. Tell everybody. Awesome. Tell everybody where, where they can find, find you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So um, the best way that we recommend is just calling our phone. So one, go ahead and tell your phone. Yeah. Number. So I just text me. Call me. Nine one three two three one five seven zero three. If you're someone that has been struggling with you know weight loss, mental. Um, trying to get started in a journey, trying to uh, have people that want to hold you accountable but won't judge you, you know, if you fall, um, but we'll be there to pick you up. That that's that's where you go. Um, we'll guide you every step of the way. Say um, it one more time. Say what number? Oh, 913 231 5703. And then you got me, Kevin, uh, 913 
850-0413. And you can text, call me. Also, you can email me at kev at ftrfit.com. Um, and you can just show up before class as well. If you do do that, try to do like 10, 15 minutes. We're always there about 20 minutes before class. So what's a, what's a drop in fee for you guys? $21. 21 bucks. And if mm -hmm. you live within, uh, is it five miles within FTR? Then we'll, I'm going to try before you buy first class in the house. I'll give you two. There you okay. go. I know, I know what, I know what we bring to the table. And if it's for you, if you have the mentality, the mindset, the heart that we have, this will be for you. Cool. And if not, if you're a, I say this loosely. No Karens allowed. <laughs> Straight up. I actually had one. Class. Unless, name's Karen. unless your name's Karen. Yeah, and you're I awesome. Yeah. And you, I, <laughs> I had one. I was like, oh, uh, well, I don't mean that like figuratively. Like, yeah. You know, we just don't like people that are going to come in here and try to be better than other people or try to put other people down. Yeah, or, come yeah. with some positivity. Or, yeah, don't want somebody to poison the well. Yeah. 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 So I, I keep that well very, very, we keep it very, very clean. Good. You know. Quite. Well, Such cool, a pleasure, man. Guys. Thanks super, again. super good conversation, man. Can we get you guys? Can I get eight or 10 of you guys to come? Do a workout sometime. Let's yeah. go. You guys yeah. heard it here. Uh -huh. Let's go, man. We're in. We're I'm in. in. And I, we'll let you choose. What do you want? Chest? You want a leg? No, nah, they don't get to choose. Oh, they don't yeah, get to choose. Nah, you guys they get the Kev special. Like we got to do legs. Yeah, I'll, I'll legs? Take, full yeah. body. We'll Come take, on. We'll I'll take I'll the, do full we'll body. We'll take the Kev special. Yeah, yeah, you want the Kev special. I'll it's, I'm in. It's an experience you don't usually get. So let's I'm in. We'll see how many reps you guys have. Luke's going to die. Luke knows what time it is. Luke's been, he's on 75 hard, so. Luke. Well, thank, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And this was amazing. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate y'all. Awesome. Appreciate all right. it. Cool. All right.